Good evening. Uh, tonight we're going to do uh, notes on Newton's third law. As you can see, I set up my notes with Newton's third law across the top. Chapter 7 is our unit. We're talking about his law, so you might want to write law here and write what the law is here. Maybe provide a diagram or image to help you out. And other core words you're going to need is action and reaction. And probably a couple other examples or ideas to help you remember the concepts. All right, let's get started. Newton's third law is one of the most common laws that I think most people have heard of. It states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, again, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is clearly shown through that static equilibrium that we learned about at the very beginning of the year. A book sitting on the desk, a force is being applied by Earth, pulling it down. But the table is applying an equal and opposite force upwards that allows that book to stay stable. Some other examples are if you're on the skateboard or a skateboard or maybe you're on the ice on an ice ring, all right, something slippery, and you push against the wall or the boards when you're playing hockey, you push yourself away. Well, that push, the wall would move. The wall would move if it did not apply a force back upon you. But since the wall stays stable, that pushes that force back upon you, allowing you to move across the ice, across the rink, or across the ground. Another clearer example is uh, if you are barefoot running around and you kick a rock, your toe is exerting force on the rock, as clearly seen by that rock trans traveling across the ground. Well, the rock also applies a force onto your toe, which, and you feel that as a sense of pain, all right? So the harder you hit the toe against the rock, the greater force the rock exerts against you, which would lead to greater pain. Another great example um, is when you're playing basketball and you go and catch the ball, but you catch it funny, all right? Well, if you catch it funny and jam your finger, that's the force your finger applied on the ball when you caught it wrong. So that jamming feeling, that tightness and the pain that it's is created is caused by the force that your finger tried to apply back. Um, again, that kind of goes with the pressure. If you catch it with the palms of your hand, it will hurt less because you're absorbing more of the force with greater surface area. Look at that. Tied it to chapter 6. So Newton's third law. Let's take a look here. We have a 5 gram bug, which, as we've discussed in the past, is 0 0.005 kilograms. Okay, so this bug flies into the windshield of our moving 1,000 kilogram bus. That's like the buses we took up to Dayton, right? Which has a greater force, the bug or the bus? Well, we just had this discussion. The force is going to be the same. The force on the bug and the force the force on the bug on the bus and the bus on the bug is the same. What changes is the mass and the acceleration. The bug's mass is so insignificant. So when it hits the bus, the change in its and the bug's acceleration is huge. That bus that bug was probably going what like three or four miles an hour, maybe, all right? Or let's go 0. 0.5 meters per second, right? So to hit a bus going on down the highway, it's gonna go from 0. 0.5 meters per second to like negative 100 meters per second or whatever the bus is traveling at. All right, so this number is going to be huge. Well, then we have our 1,000 kilogram bus. I guarantee you notice zero acceleration when that bug hits the bus. You probably didn't even notice the bug hitting the bus. That is shown here. The acceleration is so tiny that we don't even feel it. That bus doesn't even slow down a bit that we notice when the bug hits it. Now, if another bus hit it, mass versus mass, 2,000 kilogram 
bosses hitting each other, then you're going to notice an acceleration. But this tiny little thing, not going to affect the acceleration to a degree that you can tell. Okay, another example, comparing the different masses. Major masses that are hugely different are you and the Earth. The Earth has a massive mass, and you don't, not compared to the Earth anyway. So if you jump off the Tower of Pisa, the Earth is pulling you down at an acceleration of 10 meters per second. We've learned that. All right. Well, the reaction, which you will feel when you go splat, is you pulling on the Earth. So you do, in fact, pull on the Earth. You have a gravitational pull, but your weight is so minute compared to the Earth that you don't notice the effect of the acceleration. It's like 0 0.00000000, continuing less more zeros, one meters per second squared. That's about the acceleration you apply on the Earth, which is why when you hit the ground, you never notice the Earth move because you didn't really affect it because your mass was so small. So your acceleration is small, but at the end, your force the force of you hitting the ground and the force of the earth hitting you in the face is equal. Okay, another example, action is the tires pushing on the road. The reaction is the road pushing on the tire. This is the source of friction that allows the bus to move. Another one is the rocket ship going out into space. It pushes the gases out of the rocket. Well, at the same time, um, the gases push back on the rocket, allowing it to launch into space. Another prime example is when you hit a baseball with a bat. Uh, we call the applied force to the ball um, by the bat the action force. The action force is when you actually hit the ball and the ball react goes flying. Well, one of the reaction forces is the ball going flying, or the other reaction force is how the force is applied to the bat by the ball. And you, that, so B is our answer here. It's a force applied and you feel that the reverberation of your hands when the ball launches out into the distance. Okay, so quick review. Um, if you were taking a spacewalk and your safety line breaks, the only way to get back to the shuttle would be to take off all your tools and throw one one at a time as hard as possible. So that way, in that throw, you have the acceleration of the object you're throwing away from you, pushing equally as hard back against you, forcing you to accelerate in the opposite direction. So, take a look here. Jot down the different laws that you see being represented. Look here. What else are show or explain how these laws are being represented or how Newton's third law is being represented here. You may have to open the website to see or open the PowerPoint to see this. Okay, some quick review. Just reviews some of the material or some of the notes we've taken over the past couple months. All right, Somer Simpson, first one, his inertia causes him to trip or to carry the fall of momentum. All right, his mass, he has a great mass with great inertia. The second one is his mass times Earth's acceleration cause him to fall at a great force towards the Earth. And when he hits the ground, it pushes back up for him, calling his, causing his face to hurt. So this is a quick review. Uh, please take the time to go over this if you need it. Um, which is stronger, the Earth's pull on an orbiting shuttle or the space shuttle's pull on the Earth? Think about it. According to the law, the, they have equal and opposite forces. However, the space shuttle accelerates much more towards the Earth than the Earth accelerates towards the space shuttle. Okay, what force is needed to accelerate the 60 kilogram card at 2 meters per second squared? Work out the pause the tape and work out this problem. Last but not another one, a force of 200 newtons accelerates a bike at 2 meters per second squared. What's the mass of the bike rider? Pause. Move on. 
And third one, this was on your test, and some of you had a hard time with it. Bronco the Skydiver, whose mass is 80 kilograms, experiences 200 newtons of air resistance. What is the acceleration of his freefall? You need to determine his force first, so you need to find his weight. Weight is 80 kilograms times gravitational pull. Then subtract the air resistance from the gravitational pull, and now you have your force and you have your mass so you can find his acceleration. All right, have a great night.